Hey guys, so a lot of you asked if, you know, how if I can prepare some food meals for you. So we're just going to go through a little rundown of the kind of meals I make with chicken, fish, beef, and ground turkey. Now I'll go through some of the prepar pre uh, preparation process of it all with you. Um, a lot of it will be contest, I would say contest friendly, but uh, you can just modify a little bit for off season and growing time. But uh, we'll just go one by one, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so right now we are going to uh, prepare chicken breasts, how I do it. And it's going to be seasoned, it's going to have some flavor, and it's not going to be bland. I hate food that doesn't taste at all any good. So bland food gets boring, you're not going to follow your diet. So we're going to go with how I prepare chicken the real way, with some flavor. All right, so right here I have about seven or eight pounds of pre-marinated chicken, chicken breast. And I use Mrs. Dash uh, no salt seasoning with that, as well as a bruschetta, which does have salt. Okay, this kind of seasoning do have some salt, as well as a garlic salt um, I add to it. Add a little bit of olive oil to it so that it still pushes in the flavor while it's marinating. And I can just throw it on the pan and it will, won't stick. So now we're gonna put it on the pan this up and I use uh, either grapeseed oil which is what, what I'm using today and or an olive oil I just put maybe two and a half three tablespoons on the pan and then the rest will be a non-stick spray get it all get it all on there To check your pan, put your hand over the pan. If it's hot, it's ready to go. You'll see the oil start to start to dissolve and spread around a pan. That's when you know it's hot enough. You don't want it to start smoking or anything like that, then turn the heat down. But I already preheated the pan a little bit, so it's gonna be almost ready. Right now, we are going to put some real fresh garlic on there. Here's a little trick. Uh, if you wanna peel the fucking garlic, you get your clove. Let's start with this, and you Smash it, and then all the fucking little shit will come off. You don't have to peel off each one, you know, that's the turd right there. And these ones you can just smash them and they're ready to go. Put a little roasted garlic on the pan for fresh garlic. And that's it. All right, now, now we're gonna place our, ch our, our chicken breast on here. I can see I put, did both sides. I don't really care for trimming it too much. Uh, just maybe big pieces I'll, I'll go with later on, but I like fat, I think it works. Always lay the chicken away from me on the pan. Okay? You never wanna lay it towards you, this way. And the splashing happens, happens away from you. As you can see, these breasts are really big, so we're not going to cook all seven or eight pounds of this stuff. Okay. Just start sticking, just move it around a little bit. Get the oil on it. And sometimes I like to put the breast, stick the biggest part of the breast, in the center of the pan, so I know it's going to cook a little bit even. even. Because right now we are going to pan sear the breast. And then we're going to finish off in the oven so that it actually cooks with a kind of texture to it. I personally hate just uh, oven, oven cooked chicken without a sear on it. It just comes out like shit. I can't eat it after a while. But this allows me to cook with some texture to it. So we'll flip this on both sides and then we'll pop in the oven to finish it off for 35 minutes. And now we're gonna preheat our oven to about 385, 390 for all this kind of chicken. These are thicker breasts, so we have to make sure when they fit, cook in the oven, it's at a proper temperature so they finish cooking in there in about 35 minutes total. All right, so I don't have the luxury to always get fresh vegetables, so I like uh, to get frozen. 
the foot this far convenient for me. Um, but here's a two pound bag of, of broccoli I get at Walmart. I think it was like, you know, three bucks. So, and I'll just have this special kind of pan that my awesome girlfriend picked up for me. Actually she gave me, because she doesn't use it anymore, but I'm gonna put it to good use on a consistent basis. Pretty much acts as a steamer, it has a, has a strainer pot you put inside of a pot. So I filled up the water, little, the pan up, the pot up with a little bit with water, and then I'll put it on to maybe like a little above medium, mid medium, and then I'll just steam. And I'll just cook it by, I don't have to put the microwave, I'll just put a lid on it, and that's it. I'll just do its thing. Simple, convenient. All right, so now we gotta check our chicken breasts. They've been on one side for about four minutes, five minutes right now. So we're gonna try to check them out, see if it has a nice little crust on it. And if it does, we're gonna just flip them all over, all right? Let's see how this is all turning out. Oh yeah. See that little crust going on here? Oh yeah, that's exactly what we were looking for. Nice little crust. Beautiful. This makes dieting and nutrition so much better so you can enjoy your food. It can make like a chore. See, now, for example, on a breast like this, which is a breast like that, I know the heat's more over here, right? So if I want this thing to cook more and more evenly, I'm going to swap them out. Just for this size. Let's, let's, be, let's be honest, not all of us have an have a, uh, industrial kitchen at home. So, we're all just regular people trying to make it out in, in the cooking world a little bit. So we gotta we gotta modify some of the things that uh, big time chefs don't have to deal with. So I moved that breast over to where this one was, and now it's gonna cook a little more evenly. Now we just do four or five minutes on this side. Once the oven is preheated, we pop in the oven to finish this off the cooking, and then we have our custard roasted chicken. So now we're gonna cook some sweet potato. Um, how I do it is this. If I'm in a bind, if I'm in a rush, I'll put it in the microwave, but I have to cook like one or two of them. Four or five minutes, they're cooked and new and ready to eat. But if I had the time, I prefer to just oven, oven bacon. So I'll chop off the ends, these have been pre-washed already, and then I'll just put them in a pan, whole. Some people like to chop them up, slice them up, make french fries. That works, but I'm just trying to make it simple for myself. I just like to cut them in halves like down the center, and I'll show that later when they're cooked down the center when they're finished cooking. So it's like, it's easier for me to eat. It becomes like a finger food almost. So I'll slice off the ends. No seasoning whatsoever on these. Can't really have it in pre-contest or dieting mode. But in off season, I'll add a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, maybe even a little cinnamon, add a little spice. Get creative with the stuff. Garlic will go good with this, but since these should take a little bit longer to cook in the oven. I'm going to put these in now before we put the chicken in. So right now, the oven is already preheated, but I'll put them on the top. And then they're already cooking. So by the time the chicken is done, those will be done. All right, so I just checked the chicken breasts. They are ready to be put in the oven. As you can see, nice little texture on the top of all the breasts. I did have to flip this one again. The reason being, the other side didn't have enough texture on it. So I made sure now it's getting a texture. This one a little raw, so I'm making sure that all the very raw side underneath get more, more cooking time before we put in the oven. Now they're ready. I'm going to turn the top, stove, the top burner off. And we can add it in to the oven. And then we'll finish off cooking. And now I'll put a timer on for let's say 38 minutes and it should be done all right so with ground beef uh, I personally like either ground top sirloin or a bison ground beef okay today we're doing bison I prefer I, I, I classify it as a better quality of meat um, if you can find it on sale good deal let's turn the pan on Spray it up. No oil in this one, obviously, as you can see. I'll just cut them open. This will be exactly two pounds of ground bison.
And yes, I washed my hands before I did this. It's a little more expensive than your standard ground beef. You're looking at, depending what state you live in, but right here in California, I'm paying roughly between nine and 11 pound, bucks per pound of, of ground bison. But if you get lucky, you can get 30% off, 50% off at times, uh, if they're trying to get rid of it. For any kind of ground beef, I like to use Taco seasoning, sodium is your friend, and so is flavor. Anyone that says no to sodium doesn't know how to diet very well. Sodium is required for muscle contraction and pushing water and keeping water into the muscle. So sodium is not really an issue if you're in shape or you're training hard enough because you'll just be sweating everything out, especially if you're drinking enough food throughout the day. So sodium is not a problem. Highly recommended. Don't really need to cut out sodium until maybe the night before a contest or even never at all. So, the great thing about ground beef or any kind of ground meat is it's a fast cooking process. This will be done in five, six minutes pretty much. Just keep the, the, the pan on high, let it cook for a little bit. Now we're going to let it sit for maybe a minute and then just keep stirring it up and I'll be done. So. Personally, I would love to have a steak, but I'm not the best steak cooker in the world. Uh, they either come out too cooked or I'll be eating, eating cardboard. So, and I, I prefer filet mignon more than anything, so I don't think I can afford 20 bucks a pound at the moment. So this is a cheap alternative and fast and cooking process. When you have to cook and eat a lot of food, faster is the better. But take that extra little time to add flavor into it. That will make you make your dieting and your nutrition plan go a long way. So now, as the meat is cooking, I want to add some fresh herbs to it. So we got some cilantro here and some shallots. Okay, I like fresh herbs. So I'm not the best chopper, so don't judge me. So I was taught to let them do the knife do all the food work. So yes, I wash my hands. Let the knife do the work. And that's it. Obviously I didn't cut that very well. But after that, I'll just throw this all into my ground beef. Ground bison, just keep it correct here. And this will cook with the food and add that extra flavor. Food network there. Okay, the uh, bison is pretty much done. So the next step is just turn it off and let it sit. Let it sit because it's still going to be cooking for a bit. So we're going to just let it sit. Let's do a couple more stirs. Make sure I just don't see any raw pieces. And if I do, put them near the bottom of the pan. Like so, this is not raw, but I'm just showing you an example. I'll make sure it's on the bottom of the pan, not on top of some other meat somewhere. So that way, when it's finished cooking, by the time I portion it out, it'll be all done. And that's pretty much how you cook bison. And in a minute, I'll show you how I divvy out my portions. Okay, so we let the bison sit for a while. I can put the pan on the, the granite because it's granite. If you have a wooden top or a plastic top, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's for convenience. So my meals require eight ounces of ground beef, ground bison, lean steak. So we just gotta divvy it all out. These meals require sweet potato, 10 ounces, 
but obviously those are still in the oven. So I will add that to these meals once those are all done cooking. About two pounds of raw bison or ground beef will net me about only three meals of food. But if you're a female, you don't really require this much kind, this much protein per meal. I would say four ounces, five ounces at the most. If you're a highly active athlete, train, uh, figure figure competitor, etc., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Carb-wise, you can either have a half a cup of rice, four or five ounces of potato. Or, if you're just doing low-carb, there's plenty of fat within the, the bison. You just net a full cup of just steamed vegetables. You don't really need to have as much food as a guy my size of 230 pounds or bigger. Um, if you're 130 pounds, this is four ounces of anything. There's plenty of uh, nutrition per meal. So now we're going to check if our steamed uh, broccoli is all done. Uh, what I usually do is I just take off the lid and get my balls of steel and just touch them. Now, if they're really gushy, you overcook them. Right now, as you can see, I'll take one out. They just pull apart. They don't fall apart. That's the difference. At that point, turn it off. Keep the lid off. Done. But a real chef will tell you you have to stop the cooking process. So, we'll take the pan over to the sink. Don't judge me with my fucking cat food, please. I have a dog who will eat that shit if I don't put the cat food high. So now we're going to stop the cooking process. As you can see, it's a strainer. At the same time, cold water. Give it a shower. That way, it won't get mushy if you leave it on top of the hot water or steaming or whatever. It will stop the cooking process and you can have a little more texture with your vegetables. That applies to everything. Green beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, the works. Okay, now we're going to do the ground turkey I have to eat. I fucking hate ground turkey. Tastes like shit to me. I'm perfectly fucking honest. I'm being transparent right now. But sometimes in the... Uh, competitive world, the fitness world, when we hire someone to aid us, coach us in doing our diets, our plans or whatever, we have to someone suck it up and eat what we're told. They know we got we to gotta just trust the process, okay? So, I ate turkey, but I got to fucking eat it. So this is how I make it tolerable. The main reason why I hate fucking ground turkey is if it's not fresh, it tastes like shit. It gets... A little gelatinous when it's cold, and I can't stomach it very well. So if I don't have enough seasoning or flavor in it, I can't, I can't, I can't muster it down very well. I, I kind of just have to throw it down with uh, <clears throat> a lot of fluids, and it just sucks. So I kind of do the same thing I do with the uh, ground, ground beef, ground bison, taco seasoning, uh, and some garlic. Asia does it does it well for me. So here we have three pounds of lean ground turkey. I wash my hands, so shut the fuck up if you have a problem with this. Spread it around. And get it all in the pan. This will roughly net me maybe five five meals of ground turkey. And this will last me. I have one ground or two ground turkey meals a day, so two Two and a half days, right here. Yes, I just throw it in there and mush it together. Don't judge me. I know Gordon Ramsay or Chef Irvine will have a hiss fit for what I do, but uh, you gotta make it. You gotta make it work. So, with my other clean hand, I add in the seasoning, a truckload, because yes, I can't stomach fucking ground turkey. Garlic salt. 
and that will be sufficient sodium. Like I said earlier, sodium is your friend. You should not have a fucking issue with having sodium. Now, if it has minute traces of sugar in the seasoning, it all depends on how much, okay? Because if it has little traces, it's going to burn off for the most part in the cooking process. So you don't have to worry about too much of a gram here or two grams there. Not a big fucking deal. Now, if you're cooking with high sugar sauces, such as some teriyaki or sweet and sour sauces, then you're going to be going in a negative direction with your, with your, your flavoring, okay? It all depends on what kind of results you want. Now, if you're a strong man, power lifter, you really don't have to worry about those kind of aspects. You just need to make your food taste good and need to truckload of it. If you're trying to diet down, you got to worry about those kind of things. So high fat, high, high sugar condiments are some things we have to avoid at times, unless you're in the off season. So I'm going to mush this up. This should take only roughly about 10 minutes to cook as well. And it's the same damn process as the ground beef or ground bison. Now, I forgot that earlier. There's another way I would take a ground beef, ground bison, even a ground turkey. I will make fucking meatballs. Healthy style. A lot more seasoning. I would add a little, maybe a cup, cup and a half of raw oats to it instead of like panko bread mix, breading or something like that to keep it together. I would add one whole egg throughout the whole trough of ground meat. Make a little meatball, season it up, and then I'll fry them, okay? Not on oil, but I'll actually fry them with, like, you know, a nonstick spray or something like that on the pan. That will make it more palatable in the long run as well. That works for me. It may work for you. Same thing with, um, if you eat a lot of potato. That can get redundant and old, having to eat a baked potato or steamed potato. What helped me in the past was mashed potatoes. Instead of using sour cream, plain, fat-free Greek yogurt. Same taste, better for you. Instead of milk, just use more uh, Greek yogurt. Salt is your friend. You can use butter, but use simple traces of, I can't believe it's not butter, or some like a butter made with olive oil. Add that in there, salt it up, add some pepper, some garlic, mash it up. Mashed potatoes can save your life if you have to eat a lot of potato. So those are all my little two tricks with, mash, with potatoes and ground beef and ground meat products. They help me in the long run, they can help for you too. A third method I like to use for any kind of ground meats or something like that. Instead of the standard ground up and the meatball, make a meatloaf, okay? Very simple to make. A little tomato paste, seasonings, a whole egg, you can even use some raw oats like I made for like, like I would use for meatballs. Mash it all together, put it on a pan, put a little ketchup on top or some barbecue sauce. Put in the oven. That will be easy to portion out because you just slice it up when it's done and eat it with some potatoes or rice or whatever vegetables. Very simple to eat and it's a lot better than just eating this mush of ground fucking meat that many of us just have to cook up and do anyway for convenience purposes like I'm doing right now. Oh, what's that sound? Fucking chicken's done. Once you do shit, all right, look at my gloves. Okay, look at that, juicy oven roasted pan seared chicken breast. <clears throat> Now the cooking process is still going, so we just let it sit there. Because if you cut it and portion it out now, you're going to make the chicken dry and all the juices are going to escape. Same thing with a roast, same thing with roast beef or any kind of big steak. After it's done cooking, let it sit there for 20 or 30 minutes, let the juices solidify inside so when you cut it, all that flavor still stays. Keep that noted. So now we're going to do our chicken meals. This is all finished cooking. So I will just slice them up. They have rested for a while. As you can see, all nicely cooked inside. Juicy. And I'll just slice them up in big pieces like this so it's easy to eat. 
I eat fast, so it all just comes apart. See, nice chicken. So I have two meals of chicken a day right now, and we're just going to put it ounces. Number four, number seven, and there's eight and a quarter, and that's the meal. And I'll just do that until it's all filled up from all the chicken I cooked. Seven, a little over eight, and we just keep on doing that until it's all filled. All right, we're gonna cook sweet potatoes now. If you have one of these, cool. If not, a fork will do. But I have plenty of these for kebabs. Comes out perfectly. See, it's not stick, except that one. <laughs> that one. That's still good. They're still cooking. You see, it's still soft. That's all right. See, still soft. Still good enough to eat. So that's sweet potatoes. And how I like to cook, slice them up. And maybe a little bit tough to uh, do it while they're hot, but I'm going to do it fucking anyway. Just to show you guys. Is I'll take one and slice it like that. Each is about five ounces, so this will be enough for three meals. Open it up, each of them. Same process. Yes, I gotta sharpen my knives, it's okay. So I've cooked enough sweet potato for three meals. Hot as fuck. And that's it. And so forth, I'll do the rest, but you guys get the idea. So our ground turkey is done, as you can see. I didn't grind it up too much, but I still like some big chunks in there. That's what ground turkey should look like. Lean ground turkey anyway. If it was a little more fatty, it would be more brown than this. And that sucks. It tastes like shit, honestly. I wouldn't recommend it. So make sure you always buy a lean cut of ground turkey. I've tried the uh, little fattier stuff, and it's not very good. It looks like it tastes like dog shit, honestly. Turn off the heat. Let it sit. And then that's done. You can divvy it out like I did with the ground beef and ground bison. Okay, so now we're going to cook meal, fish meal. I personally don't like to eat any farm-raised shit anymore. I have learned over the years that it's junk. It has lack of nutrients, especially healthy fats. So, I always go with wild-caught fish. And today we're going to do cod. Uh, I won't eat tilapia anymore. It's shit. So, the only thing that I find palatable these days is cod. I'll put some nonstick spray on there. But... I like a little bit of grapeseed oil in there, not a lot, just so I can get a little, little, little bit of a crust on the fish. So I preheated the pan a little bit. It's hot. I'll divvy up the oil a little bit. Okay. And here we have our cod fillets. These are frozen but wild caught. Once again, put it on the pan away from you. I'm going to break the rule this time so I can just fit it nicely. <laughs> Don't judge me. And there we go. Today, what kind of seasonings I have to use Old Bay. Very good for any kind of seafood. Shrimp, anything like that. I'll put a little Old, old Bay on there. Not a whole bunch. And 
cilantro that I diced up earlier, as you saw. Remember, add some flavor to your food. You don't have to be so picky of not adding anything. Learn to cook some shallots. Alright, and we are going to add some minced garlic to the mix. I'll add it and then I'll just put it on the fish. I'll just spread it on the spoon. So no, I pre-thawed these fillets prior to cooking. And um, you can do them frozen, but it's, I don't recommend it either. So we're going to flip it over and suck that one up. So FYI, I'm not the best flipper in the world. And there we go. And the good thing about cod is it doesn't, it's, it's not too thin where you uh, fuck it up like that. <laughs> Don't judge me anyone, I'm, I'm, I'm just in a long day. So, there we go. I'm not a very good flipper. You should see me a pancake, it's horrible. So, we'll let that cook for another few minutes on that side. And that'll be it for that kind of uh, cooking tutorial. Now about two pounds of fish. Here will be a roughly about only two meals for me because I have to have two ounces per meal. So it can get kind of costly with fish. Uh, is there a benefit to eating fish over chicken or turkey? In my personal opinion, there's not. But uh, I do add it in my diet every so often. Uh, you know, the whole thing is it fish thins the skin. That's, that's a bunch of bullshit. What it really does is just very easy to digest. That's why people eat fish. So it's not really thin in your skin, it's just digesting a lot faster than chicken or, or turkey or beef. It just, you know, just goes right through your system a lot more efficiently and it's in and out of your system. So that's the whole thing about fish. It's not really thin in the skin, it's just faster digestion, that's all. Alright, so this batch of fish is done. I still need to cook some for another meal, but I'm just going to show you how I plate this one. Okay. Now, I do need 10 ounces of fish, so it can get quite costly, so hopefully I can get three meals out of this. I doubt it though, but right there is eight, and this should put me to 10. Um, all right, good enough for government work, okay? So, get this pan out of the way, and this meal requires one cup of vegetables. You can use any kind of vegetable, green beans, broccoli, asparagus. Asparagus might be a little more expensive, but I prefer eating asparagus in the morning with breakfast, and later in the day, a cheap bag of frozen broccoli or green beans is sufficient. So I'll do one cup of steamed vegetables. Now, no carbs in this, but I do need flavor. So with this, I'll add like a hot sauce or something like that. But with the broccoli, you gotta fucking use the ranch dressing seasoning. Okay? There is no fat, just sodium in here. Look at that. You can use this shit on your chicken. You can use this shit on your fish. And it is guilt-free, and it's just sodium, like I said. Adds flavor, and it's ranch. You can't go wrong with ranch. And that is a typical fish meal for me. Doesn't look pretty because it sort of fell apart, but you get the idea. Usually I played it a little bit better if the fish didn't fall apart a little bit. But yeah, that's uh, how it is. And right here we have my ground turkey meals, a cup of vegetables. Got 10 ounces of sweet potato in each. Divvied it up and eight ounces of ground turkey. Once again, I'll go back, add a little ranch to that shit. These little things go a long way. Bam. Boom. Okay, so as you can see, we separated the chicken portion, so I have I have two meals a day of chicken, one with just vegetables, one with vegetables and a cup of rice. So <clears throat> we're going to put a cup in each. I'm just going to 
give you the carb, the, the vegetable meals I'm putting in here. Now, a few days ago, I pre-made my rice because I needed it anyway, so I'm just going to show you what I use for rice. I'm not a Jasmine rice fan, never, never will be again. Uh, I started using this rice about six years ago during my last contest prep, but it's a sushi grade rice, okay? So, three quarters cup dry to one cup wet, 20 minutes after it puts to a boil, you have fully cooked sushi sticky rice. Lifesaver for texture. Uh, I found with eating jasmine rice after it's been cold, it just becomes hard and falls apart. It's not sticky anymore, at least with this, it stays sticky and <clears throat> more enjoyable. Now with rice, I usually, I, can, I usually sometimes use curry powder and I make a curry rice, but today I use beef bone broth in uh, one cup to, and, th and two cups water, because I made three cups, three three quarter cups dry in this batch. So I have a little beef bone broth for flavor and, nutri and nutrients within my rice. As you can see, sticky, comes, doesn't fall apart. And we have a cup of rice per meal. I've learned over the years not to go cheap, too cheap with your rice. A big bag like this cost me about $14 at Safeway. Uh, it's just a better, better, better way of eating it. I'm sure you can get the cheaper rices and it does its job. Same, same nutrients and shit. But uh, not, not too fun to eat after it gets cold. And don't forget, with all these vegetable meals, I do add my secret ingredient of ranch, powder, flavor, and salt. My friend. Yeah, I should have put it on before the rice. Don't judge me. Now, that's about three days worth of meals right there. I pre-make my, my breakfast every morning, that's freshly made every day, and my post-workout shake. But other than that, these are made ahead of time, so for convenience, go to work, on the road. I don't have the time to make them fresh daily, so this is three days worth of food. Um, and that's uh, a typical meal prep for, for myself. Now... Like I said, with females, you can probably eat half of this food, and it'll be efficient. It'll be worth six, to one week worth here for you. Um, but for my requirements, this is three days, and I make breakfast fresh every day, and that's either two servings of grits. Um, that's about 60 carbs. And I have a cup of egg whites, some vegetables, as well as a cup of berries, and two or three scoops of protein. Now, sometimes for convenience, I'll split that into two portions because my mornings are very busy. I'm a single dad, so I got to get in and out of the house quick. So right away, I'll try to do my two scoops of protein with a little bit of egg whites, a little bit of almond milk, and the berries. Blend that up, slam it down. Then I can go, drop her off at school, and then I can have, when I get to my office, I'll have my eggs, vegetables, and grits. So within the hour, hour and a half, I have both parts of that meal. <clears throat> and after the workouts, usually just two scoops away. I usually add a little more egg whites. Um, and that's it, some creatine and some glutamine. Simple. And then 30 minutes later, I have my next meal on the plan. And that's about it, guys. So I hope this was uh, educational for you on how to cook with some flavor and some variety and some different cooking methods. 
Um, I tried to teach you guys some uh, ways to make your meals more enjoyable with some texture and some flavor that won't kill your um, your fitness goals. Because uh, if you need to get lean, some of these will work. But if you need to add some mass, add a little more calories, a little more fat, a little avocado to some of these, some extra olive oil, some nuts, and that's it. Some fruit. You know, an apple a day will keep the doctor away kind of shit. I've yet to see that happen, but uh, yeah. And with these, uh, I'll show you the condiments I go with. You can come see my OCD condiment cabinet here. So, I like jalapeno mustard. That's my thing these days. <clears throat> With my rice meals, I go with the Trader Joe's sweet chili sauce. It's very low sugar and uh, does its job like I mean Chinese food. Uh, soy sauce, obviously, but I do like my Cholula hot sauces, Chipotle. A little bit of teriyaki from P.F. Chang's, very low sugar compared to the rest. And <clears throat> we have this one. It's sweetened with honey, reduced sugar, ketchup. So I have those with my beef meals. And that's about it. And that's about it. Alright guys, that's it. Get big, get lean. See you next time. Peace.